Iloilo City is like a treasure chest of history in Panay Island, showing evidence of Spanish colonial period and Western influences. The National Historical Commission of the Philippines has recognized the historical landmarks of Iloilo, such as churches and monuments. Be brought back in the past during the time of our Ilongo ancestors by visiting these historical sites. Number 1. Haro Cathedral The Haro Cathedral was once destroyed by an earthquake in January 1948 and was only restored in 1956 under the order of the first Archbishop of Haro. His Excellency Jose Maria Cuenco. It came to be known as the St. Elizabeth of Hungary Metropolitan Cathedral in 1951 after the patroness of the Diocese of Haro. On February 21, 1981, Pope John Paul II visited the cathedral and conducted a Mass. He declared the Lady of Candles as the patroness of Western Visayas after he set the crown upon the Marian image. The Nuestra Señora de la Candelaria, or the Lady of the Candles, is the only female among the all-male collection of the images that line the cathedral's interior walls. The Marian image, which is over 400 years old, is the center of Haro's annual festival held every February 2. Her shrine is visited by devotees who believe it to be miraculous. Number 2. Yangao Church Construction of this church began in 1787 while Fray Francisco M. Gonzalez, OSA, was parish priest of this town and Domingo Libon was gobernadorcillo. The church was completed in 1797. It served as fortress against Muslim raiders. In 1898, during the revolution, the church was destroyed, subsequently rebuilt. It was damaged by earthquake in 1948. Restoration work began in 1960 and completed in 1962. The church has been described as the finest example of a fortress Baroque church by the UNESCO Convention. It's one of the four Baroque churches in the Philippines inscribed in the UNESCO World Heritage Sites list. The church is home to the Roman Catholic parish of the town of Miagao, Iloilo. It also served as a bastion against Moro raiders during the olden days. The church was completed in 1797 and is famous for the artistic sculptural relief carved on its facade. This includes the image of Saint Christopher carrying the child Christ while holding onto a coconut tree amid the papaya and guava shrubs. The orange or yellow-brown color is attributed to the limestone and adobe used in the construction. The church's foundation is 6 meters deep and its walls are 1.5 meters wide. It's hemmed in by flying buttresses that are thrice thicker than the walls, and has twin belfries of different designs. One is a towering two-story belfry, and the other is three stories high. Number 3. Molo Church the church was built in 1831 under Fray Pablo Montaño and was completed in 1888 by Fray Agapito under the supervision of Don Jose Manuel Loxing. The church is made of white coral rock and is considered as one of the most attractive churches in the Philippines. The two belfries have around 30 bells of different sizes. The Gothic design is evident on the two pointed towers of the church as well as its interior elements, such as the altars and pulpits. The altars are made of wood. The walls are adorned with beautiful murals painted by Mariano Mabunay and Jesus Huervas. 
and standing on a pedestal attached to a pillar under a gothic-style mini-roof are the female saints. It earned the moniker Woman's Church because of the 16 images of woman saints found inside. The centerpiece in the retablo or the main altar is the image of Santa Ana teaching the scripture to the child Mary with the Holy Trinity at the top. It's believed that Dr. Jose Rizal dropped by Molo on August 4, 1886 on his way back to Manila from his exile in Dapitan. Rizal visited his friend Raimundo Melissa, who brought him to the church where he prayed and viewed the biblical painting collection that was once there. Number 4 San Joaquin Church the San Joaquin Church was built starting 1859 and was completed in 1869. The construction was under the supervision of a Spanish friar, Thomas Santaren, the town's parish priest in 1855 to 1866. The church was named after San Joaquin or Saint Joaquim. His wife is Saint Anne. They were believed to be the parents of the Blessed Virgin Mary. The church was built from the resources taken from the shorelines of the area and from the nearby town called Igbaras. The resources were mostly limestone and sea corals. The front wall of the church honors the Spanish army's triumph over the Moors, known as the Battle of Tetuan, through an artwork. The final battle of the Spanish Moroccan War took place in February 1861. Upon hearing the great news of the Spanish victory, Father Santaren, who was a parish priest and at the same time overseeing the construction of the church, ordered the Filipino and Chinese workers to craft a beautiful bar relief version of the battle. The mural was placed at the large pediment of the church. Some believe that the mural is sort of a tribute of Father Santaren to his father, who was one of the soldiers in the Spanish army during the Battle of Tetuan. The unusual design at the facade of the church became a symbol of good versus evil for the people of San Joaquin. In September 1977, the church was declared a national shrine. It was also proclaimed by the National Historical Institute in November 2001 as one of the cultural heritage churches of the Philippines. Number 5 Dumangas Church The town was formerly called Araut. Dumangas was made parish in 1569 and in 1572 under the leadership of Father Juan de Alva. The construction for their church started. It was Father Juan Aguado in 1759 who proclaimed St. Augustine as a patron saint of the Mangas. He defended the town in a very famous legend. In 1777, Father Agustin Casan reconstructed the old citadel bounded by stone walls and high watchtowers. It was destroyed by a strong density earthquake in 1787. Over 1,000 years later, in 1887, Father Fernando Llorente, famous Augustinian friar for his engineering skills, began the construction of the present church. It was through forced labor with the bricks locally manufactured and white coral stones were taken from nearby seashores to as far as Antique. It was finished during the incumbency of Father Rafael Murillo in 1895 burnt down during the Filipino-American War in the 1900s and once again in 1946, Father Ramon Pampona started another set of reconstructions. Serious restoration works started in 1983 under Father Santiago and on the same year, a national landmark was given by the National Historic Institute through the efforts of Congressman Narciso Monfort. This Gothic Byzantine church is said to be the first stone church of Panay. Number 6 Santa Barbara Church The church was the site where General Martin Delgado of the Visayan Revolutionary Government 
convened the junta that raised the first cry of revolution against Spain outside Luzon. Its churchyard at that time was packed with Filipino soldiers armed with bolos and eager to fight for freedom. Santa Barbara Church was built in 1845 and is a Baroque Renaissance architecture. The whole structure imposes simplicity and beauty. Its facade is neoclassic, proven by twin neoclassic pilasters and finials. Beside it is the convent, which is reminiscent of the Moorish architecture. The interior of the church is neoclassic in style. It has three altars more elaborate than the facade and an intricately designed pulpit in the left side of the wall. Displayed at the left side of the church is one of the old bells of Santa Barbara Church. On the outer wall of the church is a sculpture relief illustrating the story of the revolution in Iloilo, including scenes in Santa Barbara, Molo, and Haro. Number 7 Ermita Chapel Father Martin de Rada, OSA, may have built the first church and convent of the Mangas Iloilo in 1572. In the same year, however, Father Juan de Alva constructed the first stone church in Panay Island in a small place called Ermita, which means chapel. It was built in the hilly part of the present-day Dumangas. A new chapel was built in the former location of Ermita, and the ruins of the former chapel can still be seen inside. Number 8 Nazaria Lagos Monument One of the Philippines' less known heroines, Nazaria Lagos Ila Brilliaso, was also known as the Florence Nightingale of Panay. She became the revolution's first nurse and the director of the hospital of the Revolutionary Army of the Katipunan. She organized a field hospital, donated her own hacienda building for the revolution in 1898, and risked her life to attend to sick and wounded soldiers. She sued the first Philippine flag to fly over the skies of Duenas. Nazaria Lagos Monument is located in Duenas, Iloilo. Number 9 Old Iloilo City Hall The building was designed by Juan Arellano and Francesco Ricardo Monti and built in 1933 to 1935. In 1942 to 1945, it was used by the Japanese during the war. One ninth of April 1947, the building was given to the University of the Philippines by Mayor Fernando Lopez who became the Philippines' Vice President. The old Iloilo City Hall is an example of neoclassic architecture found in the country. Number 10 Balantang Memorial Cemetery Shrine The National Shrine marks the Battle of Balantang on this site is where the bloodiest battle fought by the Panay guerrilla forces led by Colonel Macario Peralta Jr. from February 5 to March 20, 1945. The monument is dedicated to the freedom fighters of Panay and Romblon who gave their lives for the cause of freedom and democracy. The shrine is located in Haro, Iloilo City. Number 11 